Right, lads, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Roy Hodgson may look like he's 103 years of age and seem like he's been managing since the dawn of time, but I think it's fair to say in recent weeks he's proved a lot of people wrong, including myself to a certain extent, in terms of the fact that he's still very much a competent football manager. His Crystal Palace side are basically now safe from the threat of relegation. They've reached the 40-point mark before my own club Chelsea has, which I'm not going to think about or talk about for too long, because otherwise I will end up having a fucking mental breakdown. And yep, I think it's fair to say he's done a very good job in the six or so games he's managed of Crystal Palace since taking over from Patrick Vieira who lost his job last month and um, yeah currently steered them away from relegation they're currently in 11th place in the Premier League and 11 points above the dreaded relegation zone so basically in this video I'm going to be going through and giving you my opinions and analysis on how Roy Hodgson has managed to make this Crystal Palace team bounce again and yep how he's gotten the best out of this Palace team in such a short space of time so yep I guess we'll just get straight into it but first of all subscribe to the channel do it right now we're looking to hit 3,000 subscribers on this channel as soon as we can possibly get there leave a like in the video if you do go on to enjoy it as well especially palace fans help a brother out and hit that notification bell as well because you will never miss one of these absolutely brilliant videos said no one ever but um yeah let's just get straight into this video now how crystal palace have been revived under the guidance of roy hodgson so yeah obviously like i said just a bit of context on the premier league table right now crystal palace currently sit 11th in the premier league above my club chelsea but chelsea do have two games in hand but take it from a chelsea fans perspective palace fans no need to be looking over your shoulders whatsoever because i can safely say we will not be winning both of those even if one of those two games in hand we have over you so yeah they've reached the 40 point mark they're pretty much safe from relegation like I said 11 points clear of Leicester in 18th and they've done so with a very good run in their last six games including four wins one draw and one loss like I said against all against interestingly relegation candidates as they beat Leicester 2-1 in uh, Hodgson's first game beat Leeds 5-1 at Ellen Road in the second game then beat Southampton 2-0 away from home then drew 0-0 at home to a 10-man Everton side and lost 2-0 away from Wolves and you're thinking okay maybe the, the honeymoon fit period is gone for Roy Hodgson but then he picks up another win a 4-3 win over West Ham earlier today which is the reason why I decided to make this video because I wanted to talk about Crystal Palace and I wanted to talk about how good of a job Roy Hodgson has done I think he's done a good job in terms of changing the system from what he used in his previous stint at Palace which was a 4-4-2 a very regiment 4-4-2 who were tough to beat down difficult to play against energetic resolute and defended in a 4-4-1-1 low block and basically what they looked to do week in week out was soak up pressure and hit teams on the counter-attack with the pace of the likes of Wilfred Zaha or Andros Townsend for example but it's a little bit different this time round because I think he's realised that he has more technically astute players in this squad personnel wise when you think of the likes of Michael Elisa who wasn't there when he was last there same with Aberi Eze hence why Crystal Palace since Roy Hodgson has taken over in the last six games or so has gone back to a 4-3-3 with Palace instead of a 4-4-2 and has made them that little bit more expansive in possession and obviously you know Roy Hodgson's teams are not going to be playing free-flowing football week in week out by any stretch of the imagination but they're certainly playing a more on the ball style approach they're still playing counter-attacking football still playing direct football where they look to get the ball as soon as possible up the pitch and use the strengths of the players like Wilf Sahab, Ebere Eze, Michael Elise who obviously are well capable of carrying the ball high distances up the pitch and um, yeah, basically getting Palace into the final third and into shooting areas as soon as possible and you can see that in Palace's possession stats they're you know averaging a lot higher possession in recent weeks to you know what they were averaging in that previous stint albeit they are playing against you know lesser sides in the Premier League right now having played six or candidates like I said so naturally they're going to have a higher average possession rate but even still you can see when Palace play they're taking the game more to teams and they're not being as resolute and as rigid defensively. Another thing I think he's done absolutely brilliantly is getting the best out of this Palace team from a mental perspective in terms of the fact that you can clearly see this Palace team and these Palace players are playing with more freedom they're playing with more confidence and I think that's one thing that Roy Hodgson has definitely done behind the scenes is almost take the shackles off this Palace team who were obviously going massively downhill in terms of their form under Patrick Vieira at the end of his stint and I think Roy Hodgson has really revived these Palace players in terms of giving them that little bit of belief a little bit of a fresh start and um, yeah just getting these Palace players enjoying their football once again and you can definitely see that in how well they've played in the last six weeks especially those front players like I said and I think one thing in particular with regards to the team overall and the front players overall that Roy Hodgson deserves credit for is bringing Eberi Eze back in and I know that's not really something he should be you know plotted for because it's obviously clear to see that Patrick Vieira was making a mistake in terms of leaving Eze out of the team on a regular basis which I couldn't understand for the life of me to be fair because I really really rate Eze as a player I think he's got absolutely every single attribute you would want to make it to a top club I really think Eze has the potential to make it to a top club given his strengths in terms of driving forward carrying the ball being progressive his you know vision and the fact he chips in for goals and assists as well I think he's got absolutely everything Eze to make it to a top club and yeah that's why I was so surprised when he was out of favour almost in terms of you know Vieira's team selections and what Hodgson has done has almost just given Eze that free 
free roam in possession and obviously like I said Palace do still somewhat defend in a 4-4-1-1 low block most of the time and with Eze being that you know first one behind Jordan Ayew who did play up front today and almost giving Eze a little bit more license to roam and be free and be creative on the pitch and show what he's capable of because Eze is definitely a player if you release the shackles from him and let him do what he's capable of he will be able to punish opposition teams like we saw today against you know West Ham where he won that penalty whether I think it was dubious or not he still was very good and has been absolutely brilliant in recent weeks and yet Eze has been absolutely brilliant under Ray Hodgson and I think that's one of the main reasons why Hodgson has been so successful with this Palace team in such a short space of time is bringing those players in first of all and second of all getting the best out of those young players which clearly are Palace's most threatening players in Zaha who was out of form before Hodgson came in Jordan Ayew who's been really good and probably never looked better in a Palace shirt to be fair and then the likes of Elise and Eberia Eze as I said as well and like I say as well obviously with this Roy Hodgson team when he first took over and the Roy Hodgson way is first of all to like I said be rigid and be structured and soak up pressure defensively and hit teams on the break and there's still obviously like I said is an element to that but despite the fact he's made them that little bit more expansive and a little bit more free I suppose in the final third make no mistake about it this Palace team are still working their arses off for Roy Hodgson which is customary in a Roy Hodgson system like you can see with a few heat maps from mainly the attacking players and midfield players from Palace's performance today against West Ham where you can clearly see they're absolutely running themselves into the ground and covering some amount of distance which shows that obviously they are you know earning their right to be creative and um, yeah be expressive when in possession because of the work they're doing out of possession and yet you've got a really good balance there in terms of Sam Johnston who's obviously a decent shot stopper then you've got Joel Ward and Tyrick Mitchell who are you know very much suited to this Palace way of playing under Hodgson given the fact that both are you know stronger defensively than they are offensively then you've got Mark Gehi and Wackham Anderson who are two you know solid defensive players and will be able to contribute in build-up play when necessary then you've got Shek Decore who's obviously very energetic covers a lot of ground and is more of a natural holding midfielder and is a ball winner but not only that as well will be able to contribute to build-up play like I said and be able to drop between the centre-backs to pick up the ball off Johnston if needed when they go short. Then you've got Schlupp as a box-to-box -box who does offer a lot of energy once again. Eberi Eze, like I said, who is absolutely brilliant in that deep-lying attacking role where he's able to drive from midfield and create chances and be in and around the box and, you know, be able to play those line-splitting passes to create chances for the likes of Ayu and Zaha and Elise, who are the front three. Do all three of them offer a lot of work rate and energy off the ball and, of course, all have quality in possession, especially Zaha, who is absolutely brilliant cutting inside. Same with Elise. And both very dynamic wingers, both very direct wingers, and Jordan Ayew as well up front who will offer you a lot, a lot of work rate up front, and um, yet yeah, just great and industry for the team overall. So I think Palace have got themselves a lot of balance for this Roy Hodgson system, given the energy they play with, the work rate they're willing to put in for each other, and um, yeah, obviously the flair and creativity they've got, and spark they've got in the likes of Eze, Zaha, and Elise in particular, like I keep saying. And like I said, he has proven a lot of people wrong since taking over as Palace manager again, after, you know, being sacked or being dismissed of his duties in 2021 and being replaced with a more progressive manager in Patrick Vieira given the, the style of play he plays in comparison to Hodgson and that's why Palace were massively criticised in bringing back Roy Hodgson in terms of the fact that people were like why is he going back to the original style of play that first of all they wanted to ditch and it just seemed from most people's perspectives like it lacked a little bit of inspiration and ambition overall to go back to Roy Hodgson but I think it's worked wonders and obviously they will be a Premier League club next season which was the main thinking behind appointing Hodgson in the first place and I think with their next manager they need a manager who plays a similar style of football to maybe a blend of Hodgson and Vieira in terms of the fact that taking elements from a Roy Hodgson system in terms of being more direct and you know focusing on vertical passing getting the ball up the pitch as soon as possible and also then having a little bit of elements from Patrick Vieira's system where they're a little bit more patient in build up and are able to be more efficient in their build up and that's where Addy Hooter comes into it because he looks like he is going to be the next Palace manager according to a lot of sources on social media and um, yeah that's exactly how his teams play where they like to play with vertical passing but also aren't afraid to be more patient in their build up play but also like those quick combinations in the final third which Palace definitely do have the personnel for with those players like I mentioned Zaha, Elise and Eze and if he is to be the Palace manager I will do a video more than likely on him becoming the Palace manager and how I think they'll set up tactically in terms of the personnel and in terms of the style of play overall but that's a video for another day obviously but yeah like I said Palace fans can now breathe a sigh of relief and they can enjoy now the rest of the season they will more than likely be on the beach that'll bring us to the end of this video because I'm slowly losing my voice I'm absolutely f***ing dying with the head cold right now so even doing this video was a task in the first place but yeah if you can leave a like in the video subscribe to the channel that would be absolutely hugely appreciated and um yeah i'll see you guys in my next video and yeah chat to you later